Love Amidst Chaos, A Fateful Encounter in the City. Yes, uncle, I responded. My uncle offered me a job in the Central. Although it's far from my place, it's okay. As soon as I got off the bus, I could hear the constant commotion of people and vehicles and could see everything around me are all skyscrapers. I was thrilled to see people occupied with their tasks and realized that this is how Central looks like. I picked up my phone when it rang and started to walk when I accidentally bumped into a motorcycle, tripping me and causing me to drop my carrier and documents and miss the phone call. What the hell? I exclaimed. The driver pulled to a stop looking at me. I stood up to approach him right away, but he sped off at a tremendous speed. Hey, I yelled again. I wanted to talk to him, yet it was too late. What's wrong with him? Is he crazy? I hope not everyone here is a jerk. Ugh, now that stupid guy has ruined my day. I grabbed my phone and all my stuff, but I still felt frustrated. As I was removing the dirt from my clothes, my phone rang, and I hurriedly answered it. Hello, uncle? I said. Why didn't you answer earlier? He inquired. Sorry, uncle. Some jerk ruined my day, causing me to miss your call. I grumbled, rolling my eyes. Are you all right? He worriedly asked. I'm good, uncle, I said while looking around again. By the way, I'm already here in Central, and it's beautiful here, I added. Great. I'll send you the address where my friend is waiting for your interview there, and then come straight to my house after your interview, okay? He said. Thank you, uncle. You're welcome. Just call me if anything happens, he said. Sure, uncle, I replied, and hung up. The taxi pulled up in front of an exclusive bar, and I got out. As I got ready for the interview, I started to feel anxious. I spotted a familiar motorbike as I was making my way to the bar and stopped to approach it. Wait a minute. This is the same motorbike that hit me earlier. Does this mean this guy is here? Ah, whoever that person is, he's in big trouble. I lightly kicked the motorbike, giving it a scratch before returning to where I'd stood before. When I walked into the bar, I noticed a woman behind the counter. Hi, I said as I approached her with a smile. Hi, you're Jaden Young, right? She asked as she wiped the counter. Yes, I am, I responded. All right, take a seat here. I'll tell Gary that you're here, she replied as she walked away. I couldn't help but look around while waiting, adoring the exquisite interior design with a black theme that complemented the overall ambience. I got up and moved closer to the counter so that I could see the different drinks better. Since I had previously worked at a coffee shop, I was more familiar with various types of coffee than alcoholic beverages. I was observing the drinks when suddenly someone started talking, startling me. Who are you? Someone with a husky voice asked directly behind me. The nervousness I was experiencing prevented me from turning around right away. Didn't you hear me? He asked once again. And as a result, I slowly turned around to face him. But to my surprise, the person I didn't want to see was right in front of me, sporting an evil grin on his handsome yet annoying face. I couldn't see his face, but I'm sure it was him as he wore his leather jacket and the helmet that he was bringing along. The, it's you. It was you who ran over me, I exclaimed, raising his right brow. How can you be so sure that it was me? Perhaps you're just wrong, he said, with a smirk and shrugged, irritating me even more. Considering the leather jacket that you're wearing, and not only that, but also because of the helmet you're holding, I can't be mistaken, mister, I explained. And how are you so confident that I'm the only one who wears a leather jacket and a helmet like this, huh? He's really trying my patience. Ugh. First and foremost, no one would ever wear that in this heat, I retorted. And secondly, your motorbike is outside, the same motorbike that ran over me, I added. It's still not good enough to accuse me, he replied, grinning. Why don't you just apologize instead of making excuses, I said, raising my brow. No, I'm not going to apologize, he retorted back. Then don't. We're still even, I replied, grinning back. What do you mean, he asked, his eyebrows furrowed. Why don't you look at your motorbike, huh? I chuckled. His eyes grew wide, and he rushed out. Bingo, this is how I got you. Mr. Young, you're here, I turned around when I saw someone calling my name and saw a man in his fifties who was a little bit fat but had a nice posture that anyone should respect, and the lady that I talked to a while ago seemed nice. As you may know, your uncle is a good friend of mine. He always treats me when we were in high school. So, as your uncle asked a favor today, I said yes without hesitation, he said, sounding genuinely delighted to see me. Ah, yes, my uncle did mention it, I replied timidly. By the way, my name is Gary. Just call me Gary, he said. I'm glad to meet you, sir, I said while offering my hand as he reciprocated it. But before we drive into working together, I need to check your background first to see if you're skilled enough to work as a server. But let's take a seat first, he said as he sat down on their stool at the counter. 
So what sort of skills do you have? He wondered, after I gave him the documents. I worked as a server and a barista in a coffee shop in my town when I was just 18 years old, so I already had prior experiences serving people. But I'm not yet familiar with beverages here, I said. Nice. That's what we all need here. Sky will just guide you about liquor since you're going for the server position. And it won't be hard for you, he said, and gave me back my documents. But I tensed up hearing the name he mentioned. Sky? I asked. My brows furrowed in confusion. Yes, it is Sky. Is there any problem? The guy that I encountered earlier butted in as he entered. Crap, so perfect, you're here. Sky, this is Jaden, our newest employee. And Jaden, this is Sky, our bartender. Gary said, drawing Sky closer while he was smirking. I hate his face. Ah. Oh, Jaden, you can start tonight. We're understaffed, but don't worry. We'll start at 7 p.m., so you can go home after Sky finishes your brief training, Gary said. What? No. It, it's okay, but would it be fine if she's the one who'll train me? I said while looking at the woman behind him. I'm sorry, Jaden, but I'm just a server here. Sky knows best, the lady replied. Shoot. Why aren't you comfortable with me? Sky asked, still smirking. No, I said shortly. Well, everything is fine. I'll go ahead. Take care of Jaden, okay? Gary said, tapping Sky's shoulder and walked away. He's annoying. Ugh. Whatever, I'll just avoid him. I left and planned to talk to the woman earlier. I heard him calling me, but I ignored him. Hi, where's the locker? I asked as I approached the woman. Hi, come follow me. I followed her and we entered a small hallway where the lockers were located. I'm sorry, but I don't have the key. Sky has the keys while Gary is away. So go to him first and you can have your locker, she says. Thank you. Anyway, what's your name? I asked. Lucilla, but you can call me Lucy, she answered. Okay, has Sky been here for a long time? I asked as curiosity hit me. Yes, he also assisted me when I applied here. He's kind, but he's just like that, he answered. Ah, he's still a jerk. Oh, you might think that I'm talking to you because I have a crush on you, but please don't. You're handsome, but my fiancé is more handsome, she said while showing me his ring. Oh, I didn't think of that. By the way, congratulations, I said and smiled. Thank you, just talk to Sky. I'll have to go now. I still have a lot to clean, she said and left me behind. I just leaned back and sighed. I told you your key, aren't you listening? I was thrown back when he suddenly appeared next to me. Shoot, you scared me, I exclaimed. That's your key, he said and threw the key at me. Luckily, I catched it. Hurry up and get to the counter, he added and left me. Ah! I let out a deep sigh before placing my carrier in the locker, and after that, I went to the counter where the jerk was waiting. Why took you so long, he said with a frown. I just stared at him and shrugged my shoulder. Just teach me what you have to teach me so I can get home, I said, as I was already annoyed with him. Whatever, you're not a bartender, so it's okay not to remember the liquors that we have. All you gotta do is serve people and give them their drinks. I'll take care of those sitting on here on the counter stool. And you and Lucy assign there at the tables. We also offer snacks, but only a few people buy them. Besides, our work is from 7pm to 3am, and sluggish is not allowed here. Every 9 a.m. we come back here to clean, he explained while taking something from under the counter. Also study it. You need to know the different types of glasses that are used so that you don't get confused when you serve drinks to customers, he added. As he handed the paper, I looked through and I could see the different types of glasses used for liquor. Okay, I admit that even though he's a jerk, he's good at explaining things. Nonetheless, he's still a jerk. Are you done? I asked annoyedly. And before I forget... I'm the one who's in charge here beside Gary, so you need to follow me, he said and grinned, making me irritated even more. Shut up, I'm leaving, I said and took the paper, leaving him astonished at what I just said. Hey, Jaden, he shouted. I went to the locker and took my stuff. Jaden, what happened there? Lucy asked. Nothing, I'll be back at 7pm, I said, and said goodbye. Uncle House is not that far from here, because he was busy so he couldn't pick me up. I was about to take a taxi, however. I changed my mind. The taxi fee is expensive and Uncle's house is also nearby, so I'll just walk. While walking, a motorbike stopped by my side and I saw that it was Sky. What? I asked, but still didn't stop walking. Get on board, he said. What? Never. No, I said, and he suddenly started driving his motorbike. He's really crazy. After a while, I arrived at Uncle's house. I rang the doorbell and within a minute, Auntie came out. Hi, Auntie. I greeted her as she hugged me. How are you, Jaden? She asked happily. I'm fine, Auntie, I answered. 
Come in. Your uncle isn't here yet, but don't worry. Your room is ready. Do you want to eat? She asked as we entered the house. No need. I just need rest, I said and smiled. All right. I know you're tired, she answered. Auntie took me to my room and bid goodbye as we arrived. My room is not that big, but it's fine. It's well ventilated and well lit, and that's what's more important. I threw myself up on my soft bed as I was so exhausted due to the long travel. Eventually, I fell asleep. I entered the bar which was already full of people. I woke up late earlier, so I was able to enter the bar past 7pm, which I know is my mistake. Crap. It's only my first day and now I'm about to be fired. I went to the locker hurriedly as I was supposed to see Sky there. You're so late, he said. Why is he here? He should be at the counter. I know, I'm sorry, I said and placed my bag in my locker. You haven't picked up a uniform yet. If you're going to work like that, Gary made a mistake hiring you, he said, handing me a pack of uniforms. Look, I'm really sorry, Sky. Just let me off this time, I said seriously, making him stunned. I don't know why, but his angry face earlier was replaced with shock. Whatever, hurry up and choose your size and go. He retorted back and left me behind. I quickly put on my uniform and went outside. It was a very noisy outside and all I saw were people dancing and flirting, which is normal in this bar. Sky called me and I went to the counter and saw many glasses lying there. Which table should I take it to? I asked Sky while he was mixing drinks. This tray on table number 9 and this tray on table number 3, he shouted, which I could barely hear because of the loud music. I took the trays and brought them to their respective tables. As I put the tray down, they seemed to be whispering while laughing, but I just ignored it and I just went back to the counter, and I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But why does Sky seem to be the only one calling me? Did he do it on purpose? It was tiring, but I didn't fall asleep, even for a second, because of the loud music. And the other customers were exhausted. I checked the time and it was already 2.49am. There were only a few people still drinking. What are we going to do now? I asked and approached the counter while setting the tray down. Later on, at exactly 3am, Lucy will announce that we'll be closing, so that those who can still go home can leave, Sky said while wiping the glasses. What about the drunk ones? I asked again. They will be here until someone picks them up or until they wake up here in the morning. There are bouncers and guards, so nothing will happen, he answered. And later on, Lucy went to the stage and announced that we were going to close. And the others also left, but the others were still asleep because of their drunkenness. Come on, Jaden, we can go home now, Lucy said as she steps off from the stage and I followed her. How will you go home, Lucy remarked after she changed garments in the comfort room. But I changed my clothes in the hallway since nothing could be seen on me. I'll just head home on foot since my uncle's house is close to here. How about you? I asked her in return. My fiancé always picks me up after work because it's dangerous to go home now. In fact, he's out now. Do you want to come with us? She asked again. No need. I'd rather walk since nothing will happen to me. I replied with a little chuckle. Okay, but be careful. It's not like the countryside where people are all kind. Remember, this is central and there are many bad people here, she said. Which made me regret my decision, but I can't take back what I just said. Yeah, I know that. Damn, did I just stutter? Alright, I'll go ahead. She left when he heard a beep from the motorcycle, indicating that the driver was losing patience. Bye, I said, and I took my stuff and went out to the hallway. I saw Sky getting ready, but didn't say goodbye to him and left the bar. I still felt frustrated at him. Only the streetlights brightened the road in the pitch black surroundings, which seems quite melancholy. But because of what Lucy said, fear is slowly taking shape inside of me. But I ignored it and pulled out my earphones to listen to music instead. Suddenly, a motorcycle pulled up to my side, and I assumed it was someone else, but it was Sky Again. What? I exclaimed, causing his eyes to squint. You're wearing earphones. That's why you didn't hear me calling you, he says. What is it? I asked in annoyance. Get on board, he said while not looking at me. I don't want to, I said, and continued walking. Just get on board. It's already dark, he retorted, mixed with anger as well. Ugh. I rode with him because I knew he wouldn't miss me either. Where's your house? He asked, and I pointed to him. In less than five minutes, we arrived at the house, and I got off the motorcycle. You're paid, I said, causing his eyes to squint. What do you mean I'm paid? He asked as the curiosity hits him. You're now paid for bumping me earlier, I answered. What? He asked while laughing. Didn't you scratch my motorbike? Is that still not enough? He added with a little chuckle. Whatever, I said, and left him. The next morning, I went to the bar exactly at 9 a.m. for cleaning. I've seen a lot of trash everywhere, and as usual, Sky was at the counter to fix the drinks while Lucy and I cleaned the mess on each table and chair. Jaden, Sky called me and went to the counter where he was. What? I asked. Throw this, he said, 
raising my eyebrows. No, I answered. Throw this away, I'll report you to Gary for being late on your first night of work, he said with a smirk. I hate you. I mouthed and I took the plastic bag and stormed out of the bar. He's really a jerk. Ah. As soon as I walked into the bar, he gave me another order to get the wines from the storage room. He's wearing out my patience. All he did was telling me to do the same thing the entire week. And we didn't do anything except fight with each other. Yet I seem to be liking it. But why is he like that? He picks me in the morning, but also drives me home after work. And yet I felt good in this kind of setup. Am I starting to like him? No, no. It's impossible for me to like him. That won't happen. I'm straight. And even if I'm not, he's the least person I would like. I'm really exhausted. We just finished work today and everything went smoothly since Gary was present. I'll go first, Jaden, Lucy shouted as she was going to the door. All right, be careful, I responded. I finished getting dressed and was just sitting my stuff in the locker room, but I was surprised when Sky suddenly appeared next to me. What is it again? I asked. Hurry up, we're going somewhere. He answered, making me furrow my forehead. Where? I asked again. Just hurry up, I'll wait for you outside, he said, and left me. I took my stuff and went outside. Where are we going? I asked as I approached him. Just get on board and stop asking, he said, and gave me the helmet. I put it on me. This isn't new to me, and it's like I already own this helmet, because he always drives me home. We have traveled now, and I have to admit that I get excited every time we're together. After a while, we came to a bridge, and it was so beautiful, since it's already past 3 a.m., only the streetlight glowing the bridge. It's beautiful. I didn't know that you have this here, I said while removing the helmet. I noticed that you haven't been around here yet, so I decided to bring you here, he said with his arms outstretched on the bridge rail and looking out to the sea. You're right. Since I came here, I haven't wandered here in Central, I answered. Look, Jaden, that's not the only reason why I brought you here, he said, looking straight on my eyes. I couldn't help but be confused by what he said. I like you, he added. Ah, okay. What? Wh what? I asked in surprise. Did he just confess to me? Oh, come on, Jaden. Don't make me say it again. I know you heard it loud and clear, he said shyly. Even though it was a little dim, I could still see the reddening of his face, but I refused to believe it. I know him. Are you teasing me? I replied laughing. If you're teasing me, then it's not working, I said with a little chuckle. And he was suddenly stunned by what I said, and gradually a smirk came out again on his face. Then what do you want me to do? Make you believe me, huh? He said, still smirking and slowly approached me. Suddenly, my heart beat faster, and as he made a step towards me, I also made a step away from him. Ah, are you seri seriously, Sky? I started to stutter when my back hit the rail of the bridge and he cornered me with his two hands on the rail. Do I look like I'm kidding? He said, still smirking, and our bodies are so close, making me nervous. I, I don't know, I answered, and I was still trying to get myself back to a normal state, but it seemed impossible because his face was so close to me, but I was even more shocked when he hugged me. I like you, Jaden. It's okay if you don't believe me, he said in a soft voice, which made me dazed, as he still hugged me and I was about to speak when he suddenly snarled. You don't need to answer right away, since I don't take no for an answer, he said, making my lips curl. After a while, he let go of me, but he took my hand instead and gave me the helmet. Come on, I'll take you home now, he spoke. I don't know what's happening to me, but I'm so happy right now. It's like not only butterflies are flying inside my stomach, but also all the animals in the zoo. After that night, Sky's attitude toward me didn't change, but he didn't order me around. Yet, he still teased me. And that's fine with me. I don't know if it's called dating in this kind of setup. Because after work, he takes me around Central, which is very new to me. He's a different person when it's just the two of us, but I like both of his personalities. Wait, like? Do I already like him? Crap. Have you ever been to the lake here in Central? Sky asked. We just finished work today and I'm putting the helmet on me. Not yet, I answered and got on his motorbike. That's where we're going now, he said, and starts his motorbike. The lake, he says, is a bit far, but because of the cold wind that shoves us made me feel relaxed. After several minutes, we arrived at the lake. The lake was beautiful, reflecting the moon shines and the fireflies plays around the lake, making the atmosphere romantic for us. Thank you, I told him while looking at the lake, that reflecting my face. Wow. We've been together for a long time, yet this was the first time I heard that from you, he said with a little chuckle. Shut up, Sky," I said with a soft laugh as well. But seriously, thank you for doing all this. 
You don't know how happy I am every time you take me to a different place, I added. No need, Jaden. You know I love you, so I'm doing this for you to be happy, he said, and held my hand. I like you too, I replied, feeling my cheeks heat up. What? Yes, he said and shouted. Hey, don't be so loud, I said while trying to stop him from shouting. Now I know where I'm taking you next, he said with a very wide smile. Where? asked with a smile. In heaven, he said with a smirk. You're crazy, I said with a big smile. Yeah, I know, he said and hugged me. We were cleaning the bar when someone suddenly came in with a beautiful and slender body. She's sexy and her posture was also good. Hi, she greeted us. Lucy and I looked at each other since Sky wasn't there yet. Hi, Lucy and I greeted her together. Where's Gary's office? She asked in a soft voice, and she looked feminine and kind. Over there on the side of the hallway, Lucy answered, and she headed to Gary's office. Who's that? Lucy asked me. I don't know, I answered and shrugged. Maybe she wants to work here as well, Lucy guessed while wiping the table. I don't think so. Look at her posture. She's like a model, I answered and arranged the chairs. You're right. She's too beautiful to work here, she said. How are you and Sky doing? I smell something fishy between the two of you. I was stunned when she asked about Sky and me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nothing. Still the same, I answered and looked away. Okay, I just thought something's off, both of you. But maybe I'm not used to Sky acting childish these days, he said, and I just nodded. Sky and I have been dating secretly for a few weeks now, and we haven't had any issues. We always go somewhere else before going home, and my uncle and aunt also noticed something about us. So I also found it hard to lie to them. So I told them the truth about our relationship, but they didn't object. Instead, supported us. Sky eventually arrived as usual and gave me a cute wink. Sky, a woman arrived earlier in Gary's office. Do we have a new applicant? Lucy asks as Sky approached us. As far as I can remember, Gary didn't mention anything last night. Maybe she's just a friend, Sky replied, still looking at me, but he was talking to Lucy, and I couldn't stop smiling. I already know where we're going tonight, he whispered. Where? I asked. Secret, he said, and just smiled widely. But I didn't ask anymore since I knew he wouldn't say anything. We finished cleaning when Gary and the girl came out of the office. I don't know, but I felt different inside. Everyone, I'd like you to meet our temporary manager slash bartender, Avery Collins, Gary said while the woman whose name was Avery smiled wildly. Gary, what do you mean temporary manager? Lucy asked. In the meantime, guys, I will be gone. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, but don't worry, it's still stage one, so it's not that bad. Avery will be in charge while I'm away. She's also knowledgeable when it comes to bartending, so she will also be a bartender with Sky. Gary said while making Avery smile more. My world seemed to stop when I heard Gary say that she will work with Sky. Sky! Avery shouted, which surprised me. I turned back and saw the nervousness on Sky's face as he looked at me. I think they know each other, Jaden, Lucy said. Perfect. Miss Collins said she knows you, so we'll get straight to the point. She'll be the temporary manager slash bartender in the meantime. Gary explained to Sky, who was just looking at me. At night, we started working, and as usual, we were all busy again. But I can't help but feel bad that Avery and Sky are talking. I don't have any issue with Sky. I notice that he's also uncomfortable with Avery, who always wants to stay by his side. She should be at the other end of the counter. Why is she trying hard to get close to Sky? While I was looking at them, Sky caught me looking at him, so I immediately looked away. Work was over, so Lucy and I went to the hallway, but we were halted when we saw Avery and Sky talking. Suddenly, my heart beat faster, and I wonder what they were talking about. What's wrong with them? Lucy asked in a whisper, but I didn't answer it and just shrugged. Whatever, let's go. I was surprised when Lucy suddenly pulled my arm and went to the hallway where the two of them were talking. Oops, sorry, we didn't know you were there, Lucy blurted out. They were both surprised, but Avery just smiled and said goodbye. I quickly took my stuff and left. Jaden, Sky shouted, but I didn't look back. I hurriedly left and ran outside because I wasn't in a mood to talk to him. But no matter how fast I was walking, I was still no match for the motorbike, so he caught up with me. Get on, I have something to tell you, he said, but I ignored him, continued walking straight ahead. Please, Jaden, I know you're not okay, but please, I have something to say, he replied. I just nodded and took the helmet, sighing. Neither of us said a word on the way. Maybe Sky sensed that I was not in the mood. Soon, we arrived at the bridge. Jaden. Avery is my ex-girlfriend. And suddenly my world collapsed when he mentioned those words. But I gathered all the strength to ask the question I have in my mind. 
First love? I asked, hoping his answer would be a no. But he nodded. No tears came out of my eyes, but it felt like my heart had been stabbed and my throat was blocked, preventing me from speaking. Look, Jaden, it's been five or six years, and I promise you that even a speck of love for her no longer exists. And when you caught us talking earlier, I confessed to her that I love you. So don't worry, she's not a threat in our relationship, he said, holding my cheek. And relief washed over me as I heard his explanation. Promise? You don't have any feelings for her anymore? I asked. Yes, I promise. So don't be jealous, huh? He replied with a smirk, and I knew he was teasing me again. Shut up, I said, but still, he didn't stop. Jaden jealous, Jaden jealous, he continues, teasing me, but my intrusive thoughts overcome me. I grab him by his neck and kissed him, which made him quiet. So what, I said while smirking after I pulled away. He was still shocked, but he pulled me by my waist and kissed me passionately, which surprised me. I think I won, he said, grinning, after he pulled away, but I was still shocked by what he did. I love you, Jaden. I don't want you to be hurt and sad, so trust me. I would never cheat or hurt you. I love you too, I said, as he hugged me tightly. We've been set up like this for a few weeks, and no matter how hard I try, I can't help but be annoyed with Avery of what she's doing. I trust Skye, but I don't trust her. Skye says she's nice, but she doesn't seem to be. She already knows that the person is in a relationship, yet she's still clinging to Sky. And Lucy has also been teasing me for a few days about us, but I just wave it off. One night, while we were working, I saw Avery holding a picture, a picture of them, and I saw that she was about to put it in Sky's locker. So I approached her and I asked her to talk outside of the bar. What's wrong with you, Jaden? Avery asked. No, you. What's wrong with you? Sky already told you that he's in a relationship with me, but why are you still seducing him? Move on, Avery. Past is past. Are you still hoping that you and Sky will get back together? Huh? Crap. He's mine, so stop being immature, because the two of you are done, I said madly and left. I don't care if she'll fire me. I left my place and started working, but Sky came to me to say that we need to talk later after work. Avery said that you shouted her. What happened? Sky asked. We went here in the bridge earlier after work. She's trying to win you back, Sky. What do you think I should do? I asked annoyedly, as if he was taking her side. You should have let me handle it, Jaden. You know how much I love you, right? You don't need to worry about it, he answered. No, if I didn't do anything, she would just flirt with you again and again and again, and I won't let that happen, I said angrily. I know that, but you trust me, right? He said, still calmly. I trust you, but I don't trust her. Didn't you tell her that you're in a relationship, yet she hasn't stopped seducing you? And what made you think it would be different if I let you handle it, huh? Nothing. I won't let her take you away from me, I shouted, but he just hugged me, causing me to calm down. I didn't realize that my tears were streaming down my eyes out of anger. Yes, I know. Don't worry. She can't take me away from you. I love you very much. Please remember that whenever you're making decisions, Jaden. No matter what she does, if I love you, nothing will change, even if she seduces me, he said, calming me down. I'm sorry, I got carried away by my anger and jealousy, I said softly. I love you, Jaden. Trust me, huh? He said, and kissed me. Yes, I love you too, I said. He drove me home and I said goodbye to him. We got home. Even though my day was not good, it ended well. Everything went well in the morning since Avery wasn't here. It was just so amazing for me. I guessed everything would go back to normal. Sky and I were just eating a pair of sandwiches at the back of the bar, but Lucy came, making us startled. Got you, Lucy shouted. See, I was right. You two are dating, Lucy added, happily that her assumptions were right. Yeah, you're right, I said. But anyways, why did you have to make your relationship a secret, Lucy asked. Lucy, not everyone is open-minded like you in this kind of relationship, and we are happy that you support us, but you are different, I answered, holding Skye's hand. We're just finding the right time as well, Skye added. Okay, I got it, Lucy replied. Avery wasn't there yet, so everything was easy for me, as before I took the trays from the counter and brought them to each table. I was so happy now while I was serving them drinks. Every step I make was accompanied by loud music. Suddenly, someone grabbed me by the arm and slapped me hard, making the drinks fall and scatter on the ground. Everyone gasped. Even the music also stopped. Everyone started whispering due to the strong slap on me. I felt my left cheek was hot and I also tasted blood from my lips. Are you Jaden, the one who flirted with my unico hijo? said the woman furiously. My tears started to escape from my eyes. Mom, what did you do? Sky came and hid me behind him. 
Is this the reason, Sky, for the nonsense you've been doing? The man rebutted. Mom? Dad? Stop. Get out of here. Don't scandalize here, Sky said. It's really us you're kicking out, huh? Tell me, did that idiot influence you for all of this shit? Sky's mother was still very angry. I love Jaden, so don't talk to him like that, Sky retorted, making everyone gasp, including the customers. And if you can't accept a relationship, then no. I've been following all your commands since I was young, but now I'm choosing myself to love whom I want to love. And if you're not happy with that, the door is open, Sky said. He did really protect me. Sir Vlad came saying that we should go home first and to treat my wound. We did leave, but Sky and I went straight to the bridge as we bought medicine at the pharmacy. I'm sorry, Sky. I got you and your parents to a fight, I apologize, as he mends my wound. Shh. You didn't do anything wrong. Look at your swollen cheek and cracked lip. I failed to protect you, he remarked, holding my hand. It's nothing. It's just a few bruises. But what about you? What are your plans now? I asked as I was so worried about him. Don't worry. I'll talk to them when the time comes. But now, let's treat your wound first, he added, and he kissed me on the nose. I entered the bar, even though my face and lips were swollen. I went to the locker room, but I was stunned when I saw Avery there. Her eyes were swollen. I'm sorry, Jaden. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to happen. I didn't know they were going to hurt you. I thought they were just going to keep Sky away from you, Avery said, as her tears flowed down from her cheeks. What do you mean? I asked in confusion. I was here last night when Sky's parents rushed to you and guilt washed over me as I saw how you were hurt and how Sky protected you from his parents. She answered, holding my hand, and I slowly removed it. You... Why did you do that? I said. I'm sorry. Jealousy and insecurity filled my heart, and I can't accept that I was humiliated by someone like you. But now I realize that I was the shameful one. I'm really sorry, Jaden. For all the things that I've done to you and Sky. she spoke. I sighed first before I answered her. It's fine, Avery. I forgave you, but you know that it's not easy to forget all of these things, right? So please, let me have some time to heal, I said. But I could see her eyes brighten as she heard what I had just said. Unexpectedly, she hugged me. Yes, you know what I did was unforgivable, yet you still forgave me. Thanks a lot, Jaden. Now I can leave this central peacefully, Avery said. What? You're the temporary manager, right? What about this bar? I asked. Don't you know Sir Vlad? She asked as she was wiping her tears. Lucy just said his name, but I don't know him personally, I said which made her shocked. You're kidding, right? She blurted out. No, I'm not, I said. Gary and Sir Vlad are couples. They're a fantastic couple. Since Gary was still healing, Sir Vlad will take over in the meantime, she explained, making me nod. I have to go now. I don't want to miss my flight. I'm glad to see you, Jaden. I hope we can be friends when we meet again, she said, and said goodbye. What about Sky? Aren't you going to tell him goodbye? I asked. No need, she said, and she got into the taxi. After a few minutes, Sky arrived. While he was at the counter cleaning, I was sitting on the stool. Avery has left, I said. I know, he replied, furrowing my forehead. How did you know? I asked while squinting my eyes. Sir Vlad came here last night, remember? It means Avery is no longer needed here at the bar, he said and handed me the food he brought. What's your plan now? I asked him. I only had one plan, he answered. What's that? I said, and he signaled me to come closer, as if to indicate that he was going to whisper something. And I came closer to him, and suddenly, he kissed me. Sky, I said, and looked at him intently while he smirked. It was really annoying. I love you, Jaden, he said, and his smirk turned into a wide smile. I love you more, Sky, I replied. Sky's parents unexpectedly invited us over to their home after Avery left, which made us initially feel quite anxious. However, when we got there, Sky's mother gave me an emotional embrace and apologized for what they had done. They claimed that Avery had explained everything to them. After all, Avery is a nice young lady. Gary has healed and returned to managing the bar, and Sir Vlad went back to their other branch while Lucy also married. We also lost track of Avery for a few months, but we recently discovered that she is a well-known model in other countries. Now that it's all over, I can't stop smiling at what's happened throughout my life. At first, all I wanted was an opportunity. Now I also have a friend and a lover. I had assumed that my first day here would be chaotic, yet indeed there was a love amidst chaos for an unexpected encounter in the central. The end. Do you believe in the idea of love blossoming from a rivalry or initial conflict as seen in Jaden and Sky's relationship? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.